Ah, the 80s, a decade filled with iconic heartthrobs who captured the imaginations of worldwide audiences. From the rugged charm of Richard Dean Anderson to the brooding intensity of Jan Michael Vincent, these leading men defined a generation's concept of Hollywood masculinity. However, as time passed, the lives of these once idolist characters changed completely. Let's take a closer look at what has become of these beloved stars as their current life situations may indeed surprise you. Richard Dean Anderson Richard Dean Anderson, a seasoned actor with a penchant for portraying iconic characters, cemented his place in television history with his unforgettable portrayal of Angus MacGyver in the hit series MacGyver. In 1985, at the age of 35, Anderson embarked on a journey that would define his career and captivate audiences around the globe. Anderson's passion for acting was evident from an early age. He honed his craft through years of dedication and training, eventually making his mark on the entertainment industry with his remarkable talent and magnetic presence. As Angus MacGyver, Anderson brought to life a character unlike any other seen on television at the time. MacGyver was a resourceful and ingenious secret agent, armed with little more than his intellect, a Swiss army knife, and a roll of duct tape. Throughout the series' seven-season run, spanning from 1985 to 1992, Anderson's portrayal of MacGyver captured the imagination of viewers, earning him widespread acclaim and adoration. Over the course of 139 episodes, Anderson immersed himself fully into the role, infusing MacGyver with a blend of charm, wit, and a steadfast moral compass. Audiences were drawn to the character's ability to solve seemingly insurmountable challenges through intellect and creativity rather than brute force, making MacGyver a beloved hero for generations to come. Following the conclusion of MacGyver, Anderson continued to leave his mark on the small screen, albeit in different capacities. While he remained primarily known for his iconic portrayal of MacGyver, Anderson demonstrated his versatility as an actor through various roles in both television and film. One notable appearance came in 2013 when Anderson made a cameo on the comedy TV series Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. In this self-referential role, Anderson played a fictionalized version of himself, showcasing his comedic chops and willingness to poke fun at his own celebrity status. The cameo served as a delightful nod to Anderson's enduring legacy in the entertainment industry and endeared him to a new generation of fans. Now, at the age of 73, Richard Dean Anderson stands as a testament to the lasting impact of his contributions to television. His portrayal of Angus MacGyver remains a defining moment in his career, solidifying his status as a television icon, as he continues to inspire audiences with his talent and charm. Anderson's legacy is destined to endure for years to come, ensuring that he will always hold a special place in the hearts of fans around the world. Tom Selleck Tom Selleck's portrayal of Thomas Magnum in the iconic 1980s crime drama series Magnum P.I. marked a defining moment in television history. Selleck's journey to stardom began long before he stepped into the shoes of the suave Hawaiian private investigator. At the age of 35, Selleck embarked on a role that would catapult him to international fame and solidify his status as one of Hollywood's leading men. Debuting in 1980, Magnum P.I. captured the hearts and imaginations of viewers worldwide. Set against the breathtaking backdrop of Hawaii, the series followed the exploits of Thomas Magnum, a charming and resourceful former Navy SEAL-turned-private investigator. Selleck's portrayal of Magnum resonated with audiences, blending action, humor, and heart in equal measure. With his trademark mustache and laid-back charm, Selleck imbued the character with a magnetic presence that made him an instant icon. Over the course of eight seasons, spanning from 1980 to 1988, Selleck starred in 158 episodes of Magnum P.I. Each week, 
Viewers tuned in to witness Magnum's adventures as he navigated the sun-drenched streets of Oahu, solving cases and righting wrongs with his loyal friends and allies by his side. Selleck's portrayal of Magnum earned him critical acclaim, as well as a dedicated fan base that endures to this day. Following the conclusion of Magnum P.I., Selleck's career continued to flourish, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In 2010, he embarked on a new chapter, joining the cast of the crime drama series Blue Bloods. In the role of NYPD Police Commissioner Frank Reagan, Selleck once again captivated audiences with his commanding presence and nuanced performance. As the patriarch of the Reagan family, he navigates the complexities of law enforcement and family dynamics with integrity and resolve, earning admiration from viewers and critics alike. Now at the age of 79, Selleck's legacy in the entertainment industry is secure. His enduring appeal, talent, and dedication to his craft have made him a beloved figure in the hearts of millions. Whether he's donning the Aloha shirt of Thomas Magnum or the badge of Frank Reagan, Selleck's contributions to television have left an indelible mark on the medium, ensuring that his influence will be felt for generations to come. Tony Danza Tony Danza catapulted into the hearts of millions when he portrayed the endearing character of Tony McKelly in the hit television sitcom Who's the Boss in 1984. At the time of his debut as Tony McKelly, Danza was a youthful 33-year-old bursting onto the screen with charisma and charm. His portrayal of the lovable ex-baseball player turned housekeeper resonated with audiences, making him a household name. Over the course of the show's eight-year run from 1984 to 1992, Danza breathed life into the character of Tony McKelly across 196 episodes, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of television history. Through the ups and downs of Tony's life as a single father and housekeeper for a successful career woman, Danza's portrayal endeared him to audiences worldwide. Fast forward to the present day, and Tony Danza continues to captivate audiences with his versatile talent. Now at the age of 72, Danza's career has spanned decades, showcasing his enduring appeal and staying power in the entertainment industry. While his portrayal of Tony McKelly remains a cherished memory for many, Danza has proven his ability to adapt and excel in a variety of roles. Currently, Tony Danza graces the small screen once again in the crime drama series Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, where he takes on the role of Stefano Stefano Danza. This latest venture showcases Danza's versatility as an actor, delving into the gritty world of crime and intrigue, a departure from the lighthearted humor of his earlier iconic role. Robert Urich Robert Urich's portrayal of Spencer in the 1985 television series Spencer for Hire marked a pivotal moment in his career. Urich brought a wealth of experience and talent to the role at the age of 39. His performance as the tough and resourceful private investigator endeared him to audiences, earning him widespread acclaim and solidifying his status as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. Tragically, Uric's life was cut short by cancer, a battle he valiantly fought until his passing on April 16, 2002, at the age of 55. Despite the challenges he faced, Uric's dedication to his craft never wavered, and his contributions to film and television continued to resonate long after his death. During his tenure on Spencer for Hire, Auric portrayed Spencer in 65 episodes between 1985 and 1988. His portrayal captured the essence of the character, blending charisma with grit in a way that resonated with audiences worldwide. Whether navigating the mean streets of Boston or unraveling complex mysteries, Urich's portrayal of Spencer was a testament to his versatility as an actor. Even in the face of his illness, Urich remained committed to his craft, delivering a memorable performance in his final screen appearance. In the television drama movie Aftermath, released posthumously in 2003, Urich portrayed the role of Jack with the same intensity and depth that defined his earlier work. Although his presence was sorely missed, 
his performance served as a poignant reminder of his talent and the impact he had on the industry. John F. Y. John F. Y. emerged as a distinguished figure in the realm of television, leaving an indelible mark through his portrayal of the iconic character, Blake Carrington. At the age of 63, F.Y. embarked on a journey that would solidify his legacy in the annals of entertainment history. His embodiment of Carrington, the enigmatic patriarch in the primetime soap opera Dynasty, became synonymous with excellence and sophistication. Throughout the show's eight-season run from 1981 to 1989, F.Y.'s portrayal of Blake Carrington captivated audiences spanning across 220 episodes. With each nuanced performance, he breathed life into the character, navigating through the intricacies of Carrington's tumultuous personal and professional life with poise and gravitas. FY's portrayal was a masterclass in acting, seamlessly blending authority with vulnerability, thereby endearing Carrington to viewers worldwide. Despite the demanding nature of his role, FY approached each episode with unwavering dedication and professionalism. His commitment to authenticity resonated on screen, earning him critical acclaim and a devoted fan base. FY's portrayal of Carrington transcended the confines of the small screen, becoming emblematic of the golden age of television drama. Tragically, FY's illustrious career was brought to an untimely close when he succumbed to pneumonia on April 1st, 2010, at the age of 92. His passing sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry as colleagues and admirers mourned the loss of a true luminary, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan, the renowned actor celebrated for his suave demeanor and charismatic presence, first rose to prominence in the early 1980s with his portrayal of the charming and enigmatic character, Remington Steele. In 1982, at the age of 29, Brosnan landed the role of a lifetime when he was cast as the titular character in the action-adventure comedy TV series, Remington Steel. As the sophisticated and dashing conman turned private detective, Remington Steel, Brosnan captivated audiences with his wit, charm, and undeniable charisma. Over the course of five seasons, spanning from 1982 to 1987, Brosnan breathed life into the character, appearing in a total of 94 episodes. Brosnan's portrayal of Remington Steele not only showcased his acting prowess, but also solidified his status as a leading man in Hollywood. With his trademark wit and debonair demeanor, he effortlessly navigated the complexities of each case, while simultaneously captivating viewers with his undeniable charm. Following the conclusion of Remington Steele, Brosnan continued to pursue diverse roles across film and television, showcasing his versatility as an actor. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that Brosnan would truly cement his place in cinematic history with his iconic portrayal of James Bond, the suave and sophisticated British spy, Throughout his illustrious career, Brosnan has seamlessly transitioned between genres, effortlessly tackling roles ranging from action-packed thrillers to heartfelt dramas. In 2024, at the age of 71, Brosnan demonstrated his enduring talent with his portrayal of Artie Crawford in the World War II drama film, The Last. Set against the backdrop of the tumultuous wartime era, Brosnan's performance resonated with audiences, showcasing his ability to evoke depth and emotion on screen. Philip Michael Thomas. Philip Michael Thomas, a versatile and talented actor, became an iconic figure in television history through his portrayal of the suave and street-smart detective Ricardo Rico Tubbs in the groundbreaking crime drama series Miami Vice. Thomas brought charisma and depth to the character, captivating audiences with his charm and intensity. At the age of 35, Thomas stepped into the role of Rico Tubbs in 1984, a pivotal moment in his career. His portrayal of Tubbs, a New York City detective who relocates to Miami to seek vengeance for his brother's death, resonated deeply with viewers. Thomas's performance, alongside Don Johnson's portrayal of Sonny Crockett, 
formed the dynamic duo at the heart of the series, contributing to its immense success. Over the course of Miami Vice's five-season run from 1984 to 1989, Thomas appeared in a remarkable 111 episodes, solidifying his status as a television icon. His character, Rico Tubbs, became synonymous with style, sophistication, and a relentless pursuit of justice in the neon-lit streets of Miami. Thomas's portrayal was marked by a perfect blend of toughness and vulnerability, earning him critical acclaim and a dedicated fan following. Beyond Miami Vice, Philip Michael Thomas continued to showcase his talent across various projects. However, his last notable screen appearance came in the 2003 thriller film Fate, where he portrayed Detective Cyprian Rains. While this marked a departure from his iconic role as Rico Tubbs, Thomas's performance in Fate affirmed his versatility as an actor, demonstrating his ability to inhabit diverse characters with depth and authenticity. Robert Wagner Robert Wagner has had a prolific career spanning several decades in the entertainment industry. In 1979, at the age of 49, he undertook one of his most iconic roles as Jonathan Hart in the action-adventure detective TV series Heart to Heart, portraying the suave and sophisticated Jonathan Hart alongside Stephanie Powers as his wife Jennifer Hart. Wagner captivated audiences with his charisma and charm. Over the course of the series, which aired from 1979 to 1984, Wagner brought Jonathan Hart to life in 111 episodes, establishing himself as a household name and solidifying his status as a leading actor in television. His portrayal of Jonathan Hart remains etched in the memories of fans, with the character becoming synonymous with Wagner's own screen presence. Despite the conclusion of Heart to Heart, Wagner's career continued to flourish, with appearances in various film and television projects. His versatility as an actor allowed him to tackle a diverse range of roles, showcasing his talent and versatility. Wagner's enduring appeal ensured that he remained a sought-after figure in the entertainment industry. In 2020, Wagner made a notable appearance in the documentary film J. Sebring, delving into the life of the legendary hairstylist J. Sebring and shedding light on the events surrounding his tragic death. Wagner's involvement in the documentary added depth and insight, further cementing his legacy in the world of film and television. At the age of 94, Robert Wagner continues to be celebrated for his contributions to the entertainment industry. His remarkable career, spanning over seven decades, serves as a testament to his enduring talent and enduring appeal. With each role he undertakes, Wagner reaffirms his status as a beloved and respected figure in Hollywood, leaving an indelible mark on audiences worldwide. Jan Michael Vincent Jan Michael Vincent was a charismatic and versatile actor whose portrayal of Stringfellow Hawk in the 1980s military drama TV series Airwolf left an indelible mark on television history. At the age of 40, Vincent stepped into the role of Hawk, a reclusive and skilled helicopter pilot, bringing a rugged charm and depth to the character that captivated audiences around the world. Throughout his career, Vincent showcased his talent and versatility across various film and television projects. However, it was his portrayal of Stringfellow Hawk that solidified his place as a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Over the course of 55 episodes, spanning from 1984 to 1986, Vincent's portrayal of Hawk epitomized the epitome of 1980s action heroes, blending steely determination with a hint of vulnerability. Despite the success of Airwolf and his undeniable talent, Vincent's personal life was marked by struggles and challenges. His battle with substance abuse and personal demons often overshadowed his professional achievements. However, his dedication to his craft remained unwavering and he continued to deliver memorable performances throughout his career. Tragically, Jan Michael Vincent's life was cut short when he passed away on February 10, 2019, at the age of 74, due to a cardiac arrest. 
His death marked the end of an era for fans who had followed his career with admiration and affection. Despite his passing, Vincent's legacy endures through his body of work, including his final screen role in the 2002 drama film White Boy, where he portrayed the character Ron. While his time in the spotlight may have ended, Jan Michael Vincent's contributions to the world of entertainment continue to resonate with audiences, ensuring that he will always be remembered as a talented actor who left an indelible mark on the industry. Tim Reed Tim Reed's portrayal of Venus Flytrap in the iconic TV sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati marked a pivotal moment in his career. Reed's journey to becoming a celebrated actor began long before he graced the small screen as the smooth-talking disc jockey. At the age of 34, Reed's talent and charisma shone brightly as he brought Venus Flytrap to life, captivating audiences with his wit and charm. From the show's inception in 1978 to its conclusion in 1982, Reed mesmerized viewers in 87 episodes, leaving an indelible impression with his portrayal of Venus Flytrap. With his signature style and magnetic presence, Reed effortlessly embodied the character, elevating him to legendary status within the realm of television comedy. As the years passed, Reed's versatility as an actor became increasingly evident. In 2022, at the age of 79, he showcased his enduring talent in the romantic comedy drama A New Orleans Noel. In this latest cinematic endeavor, Reed took on the role of Pep Hard, captivating audiences with his poignant portrayal of a character brimming with warmth and wisdom, John Schneider. John Schneider, a charismatic actor known for his portrayal of Bo Duke in the iconic TV series The Dukes of Hazard, burst into the limelight at the tender age of 19. Schneider's youthful energy and undeniable talent captivated audiences as he brought the character of Bo Duke to life with his infectious charm and rugged charm. In 1979, Schneider embarked on his journey as Bo Duke, a role that would define his early career and leave an indelible mark on pop culture. Over the span of six years, from 1979 to 1985, Schneider graced television screens in 128 episodes of The Dukes of Hazard, a beloved action comedy series that followed the adventures of the Duke family in the fictional Hazard County. Throughout the show's run, Schneider's portrayal of Bo Duke endeared him to audiences worldwide as he fearlessly navigated the perilous escapades and high-speed chases that became synonymous with the series. His chemistry with co-stars and his iconic moments behind the wheel of the iconic General Lee solidified his status as a television icon. Despite the end of his tenure on The Dukes of Hazard, Schneider's career continued to evolve, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In 2024, at the age of 63, Schneider demonstrated his enduring talent with a role in the drama film The Good Fight. In the film, he takes on the character of Michael, a role that allows him to delve into new depths as an actor and showcase his range beyond the action-packed world of Hazard County. Ted Danson, Ted Danson, the celebrated actor known for his charismatic performances and versatility, etched his name in television history with his portrayal of the iconic character Sam Malone in the NBC sitcom Cheers. Danson embarked on his journey into the world of entertainment, leaving an indelible mark on audiences worldwide. In 1982, at the age of 35, Danson stepped into the shoes of Sam Malone, a former baseball player turned bartender at the eponymous Boston Bar in Cheers. His portrayal of the charming yet flawed character captivated audiences, earning him critical acclaim and establishing him as one of the leading actors of his generation. Over the course of 269 episodes spanning from 1982 to 1993, Danson breathed life into Sam Malone, endearing himself to viewers with his wit, charm, and undeniable screen presence. 
The chemistry between Danson's Sam Malone and his fellow cast members became the heart and soul of Cheers, propelling the show to immense popularity and garnering numerous awards and accolades. Despite the conclusion of Cheers, Danson continued to showcase his talent across various mediums, seamlessly transitioning between television, film, and theater. His dedication to his craft and ability to inhabit diverse roles solidified his status as a revered actor in Hollywood. In recent years, at the age of 76, Danson embarked on a new chapter in his illustrious career captivating audiences once again with his portrayal of a fictionalized version of himself in the HBO sitcom Curb Your Enthusiasm. Embracing the comedic nuances of the role, Danson demonstrated his enduring relevance and comedic prowess, proving that age has only served to enrich his performances. Lorenzo Lamas, Masters Lorenzo Lamas first rose to prominence in the entertainment industry when he took on the role of Lance Cumson in the acclaimed TV soap opera Falcon Crest in 1981. At the time of his debut in the series, Lamas was a young 23-year-old actor, yet his portrayal of the charming and often troubled Lance Cumson quickly captured the attention of audiences. Throughout his tenure on Falcon Crest, spanning from 1981 to 1990, Lamas became synonymous with the character of Lance Cumson, appearing in a staggering 228 episodes of the show. His nuanced performance endeared him to viewers, solidifying his place as a household name in the realm of television drama during the 1980s. As the series progressed, said, Lamas skillfully navigated Lance Cumson's complex storylines, which often revolved around family dynamics, love interests, and power struggles within the iconic Falcon Crest Vineyard. His portrayal of Lancey Cumson showcased both his acting prowess and his ability to bring depth to a character that evolved over the course of the show's nine-season run. Following his tenure on Falcon Crest, Lorenzo Lamas continued to pursue acting opportunities across various platforms. While his career trajectory shifted, he remained a recognizable figure in the entertainment industry. In 2023, Lamas lent his voice to the animated TV series Phineas and Ferb, where he portrayed the character Robert Gom in a single episode. Despite the passage of time, Lamas's talent and versatility as an actor remained evident, as he seamlessly transitioned from live-action roles to voice acting in animated productions. Today, at the age of 66, Lorenzo Lamas's contributions to the world of entertainment are celebrated and his legacy endures. From his breakout role as Lance Cumson in Falcon Crest, to his more recent ventures in voice acting, Lamas has left an indelible mark on the industry, earning him a place among television's most memorable performers. Robert Gom. Robert Gom's journey into the realm of entertainment began long before he graced the small screen as Benson Dub. Gom's early years were marked by a passion for performance and a natural affinity for the art of acting. As he honed his craft over the years, it became evident that he possessed a rare talent destined to leave a lasting impact on the world of television. In 1979, at the age of 52, Gom embarked on what would become one of the most iconic roles of his career, Benson Dub in the TV sitcom Benson. With his impeccable comedic timing and innate charm, Gom breathed life into the character of Benson Dub, a quick-witted and resourceful butler whose sharp tongue and endearing quirks endeared him to audiences worldwide. Over the course of seven years, from 1979 to 1986, Gom portrayed Benson Dub in a total of 159 episodes, solidifying his place as a beloved fixture in the hearts of fans. His portrayal was not merely a performance, but a masterclass in character development, as Gom imbued Benson Dub with depth, nuance, and a timeless appeal that resonated with viewers of all ages. Despite his professional successes, Gom faced personal challenges, including a battle with prostate cancer. Despite the difficulties he encountered, Gom remained resilient. 
drawing strength from his passion for his craft and the unwavering support of his fans. Tragically, on October 24, 2017, at the age of 89, Robert Gom passed away, leaving behind a legacy that would endure for generations to come. His contributions to the entertainment industry were not limited to his role as Benson Dub, they extended far beyond, serving as a testament to his talent, dedication, and indomitable spirit. Even in his later years, Gom continued to captivate audiences with his presence. His final screen appearance came in a poignant moment as an interviewee in a 2016 episode of Oprah, Where Are They Now?, where he reflected on his storied career and the profound impact it had on his life. Gregory Harrison Gregory Harrison, a seasoned actor with a career spanning decades, first gained widespread recognition for his portrayal of the charismatic and skilled surgeon Dr. George Alonzo Gonzo Gates in the medical drama TV series Trapper John, M.D. in 1979. At the time, Harrison was a youthful 29 years old, bringing vitality and charm to the character, who quickly became a fan favorite. Gregory Harrison's journey into acting began with a strong foundation in the theater, honing his craft before transitioning to television and film. His portrayal of Gonzo Gates showcased his versatility as an actor, as he effortlessly balanced the character's professional prowess with moments of humor, drama, and compassion. Throughout the series' run from 1979 to 1986, Harrison breathed life into Gonzo Gates across 142 episodes, solidifying his place in television history. His portrayal resonated with audiences, earning him critical acclaim and leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of medical dramas. Following his success on Trapper John, M.D., Gregory Harrison continued to captivate audiences with his talent taking on a variety of roles across film and television. In recent years, he has graced the small screen once again, this time in the daytime soap opera, General Hospital. In the series, Harrison portrays the character Gregory Chase, a role that showcases his enduring presence in the entertainment industry. Larry Hagman Larry Hagman, an iconic figure in American television history, immortalized the character of J.R. Ewing, a cunning and ruthless oil tycoon, in the primetime television soap opera Dallas. Hagman began his journey into the entertainment industry at a young age, eventually becoming a household name. In 1978, at the age of 47, Hagman stepped into the shoes of the infamous J.R. Ewing, a role that would define his career and leave an indelible mark on television history. Portraying the conniving oil magnate, Hagman captivated audiences with his charisma, wit, and compelling portrayal of the complex character. Over the course of 13 seasons, spanning from 1978 to 1991, Hagman brought J.R. Ewing to life in 356 episodes of Dallas, solidifying his status as one of television's most memorable villains. His performance earned him widespread acclaim and numerous accolades, including two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Despite his success on screen, Hagman faced personal challenges, including a battle with cancer. Tragically, on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81, Hagman passed away, leaving behind a legacy that would endure for generations. David Hasselhoff David Hasselhoff, a name synonymous with charisma and entertainment prowess, burst onto the scene in 1982 with his portrayal of the enigmatic Michael Knight in the iconic action crime drama TV series, Knight Rider. At the age of 30, Hasselhoff embodied the role with an effortless charm that would endear him to audiences for decades to come. Hasselhoff's journey to stardom was marked by determination and talent. His breakthrough came with the role of Michael Knight, a high-tech crime fighter armed with an intelligent and sleek talking car named Kit. Across 86 episodes spanning from 1982 to 1986, Hasselhoff brought Michael Knight to life, captivating viewers with his blend of action heroism and suave sophistication. 
Knight Rider catapulted Hasselhoff to international fame, making him a household name and solidifying his status as a television icon. The series not only showcased his acting abilities, but also cemented his place in pop culture history. Despite the passage of time, Hasselhoff's star power has shown no signs of dimming. At the age of 71, he continues to command attention on both the small and big screens. His most recent venture, the 2022 comedy thriller TV series Z Network, offered audiences a fresh perspective on the multifaceted actor, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis burst onto the television scene in 1985 with his portrayal of the charming and witty David Addison Jr. in the comedy-drama TV series Moonlighting. At the time, Willis was a youthful 30-year-old, brimming with energy and charisma. Willis had already begun to carve out his path in the entertainment industry. But it was his role as David Addison Jr. that truly catapulted him into the spotlight. Moonlighting quickly became a beloved show, captivating audiences with its unique blend of humor, drama, and romantic tension between Willis's character and his co-star, Sybil Shepard's Maddie Hayes. Willis's portrayal of the smooth-talking private detective endeared him to viewers, showcasing his comedic timing and natural charm. Over the course of four years, from 1985 to 1989, Willis graced the small screen in 66 episodes of the series, solidifying his status as a television icon. Despite the success of Moonlighting, Willis's talents were not confined to the realm of television. Throughout the late 1980s and into the 1990s, he transitioned seamlessly into Hollywood, establishing himself as a versatile actor capable of tackling a wide range of roles. From action-packed blockbusters to heartfelt dramas, Willis proved his mettle time and again, earning critical acclaim and a devoted fan base along the way. Fast forward to 2023, and Willis made his mark once again, this time in the realm of sci-fi action cinema. In the film Assassin, released in 2023, Willis took on the role of Robert Wagner, showcasing his enduring talent and versatility as an actor. Despite being in his late 60s, Willis demonstrated that age had not diminished his ability to command the screen with his presence and skill. Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada, the esteemed actor whose portrayal of Officer Frank Poncherello in the 1977 hit series Chips left an indelible mark on television history, embarked on his illustrious career at the age of 28. Estrada's journey to stardom began with his iconic role as the motorcycle-riding California Highway Patrol officer. Throughout the six-year run of Chips, spanning from 1977 to 1983, Eric Estrada's portrayal of Officer Frank Poncherello captivated audiences with his suave demeanor, fearless attitude, and unwavering commitment to justice. With 138 episodes under his belt, he became synonymous with the character earning widespread acclaim and adoration from fans worldwide. Beyond his role in Chips, Eric Estrada's career continued to evolve, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Despite the passage of time, his talent remained undiminished. In 2023, at the age of 74, Estrada returned to the silver screen in the comedy film America, We Salute the Military. In a delightful twist, he portrayed the character of Julia in the preview of Beauties, demonstrating his enduring appeal and ability to captivate audiences across generations. Eric Estrada's journey from the highways of California to the bright lights of Hollywood exemplifies the resilience and determination of a true icon. His contributions to the entertainment industry transcend time, leaving an indelible legacy that continues to inspire aspiring actors and entertainers worldwide. As Eric Estrada celebrates his 74th birthday, his fans fondly reminisce about the thrilling adventures of Officer Frank Poncherello while eagerly anticipating his future endeavors. With each role, he continues to remind us of the timeless magic of storytelling and the enduring power of a captivating performance. 
George Peppard. George Peppard, a distinguished actor renowned for his portrayal of Colonel John Hannibal Smith in the iconic 1980s action-adventure TV series The A-Team, left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Peppard began his acting career in the 1950s and rose to prominence with his charismatic performances. In 1983, at the age of 55, Peppard assumed the role of the cunning and resourceful Colonel John Hannibal Smith in The A-Team, a character beloved by audiences for his strategic prowess and witty catchphrases. Over the course of four years, from 1983 to 1987, Peppard graced the screen in 97 episodes of the series, solidifying his place as a television icon. Tragically, George Peppard's vibrant career was cut short when he succumbed to pneumonia in May 1994 at the age of 65. Despite his untimely passing, his contributions to the entertainment world continue to be celebrated and cherished by fans worldwide. Peppard's final on-screen appearance served as a poignant reminder of his talent and versatility. In a 1994 episode of the crime mystery TV series Matlock, titled The Scandal, Peppard portrayed the character Max, leaving audiences with one last glimpse of his remarkable acting prowess. What do you think about the lives of famous actors in the 80s now? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.